I want to give a quick shout out to the uh, to the Chipotle workers. Hasanabi heads rose up at Chipotle in uh, Lansing, Michigan, and won their first ever historic union election. They are now the first ever unionized Chipotle in the country. So much respect to those boys out there. I found out about this last night uh, and, uh, you know, celebrated it a little bit. It was, uh, it was cause for celebration. I celebrated it by eating at a non-unionized Chipotle, uh, which I hope one day will be a unionized Chipotle. I hope all Chipotle is unionized. That would be wonderful. Um, here it is. Peter underscore Atulia uh, tweeted out, at the first ever shift, at the first ever unionized Chipotle, reading about some nerd. Uh, here he is giving a quote. It would be fine if you could bring up workplace issues and they were addressed, but they're not, says Atulia Dora Lasky, a 23-year-old crew member and union organizer at the Chipotle in Lansing. They say, ask us for things directly, but if you ask someone directly, they just ignore you. That made it crystal, uh, crystal clear that an individual relationship with the employer is unworkable. Thursday's vote was the latest in a string of efforts by workers to organize following the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020. And this is the reporting by Lauren Gurley. I said, congrats. He said, true story. Before there was any union, my coworker saw me reading a book from a leftist publisher. And when I got back from break, he immediately asked me, do you know Hassan? Harper and I started unionizing shortly after that. Fire. I know a lot of you uh, are, are doing the same thing at Starbucks's. I know some of you have done this at, uh, uh, you know, there's like a genius unionization movement as well, like in Apple stores. I'm proud of all of you. You guys are fucking killing it. You know? Uh, much respect. No, I'm not responsible, motherfucker. These people are responsible. The workers themselves in Lansing are responsible. I'm not responsible at all. That's not, it's not on me at all. I'm just a fucking idiot. I'm just a guy who yells into the fucking camera. And a lot of people end up listening. It's up to you, you and others like you to be able to uh, change your own circumstances. I'm not the person who's responsible in any meaningful capacity. Okay. But no, these guys are awesome. Love that. They're great. I canvassed for Demsoc local candidates because of you. Hell yeah. Shout out to the main med nurses union. We just won. Congratulations. This unionizer, uh, this union organizer warrior merged in a more perfect vid-eye shot. Nice. Um, yeah, no, they, I mean, you guys do that all the time. It's great. Uh, all right. So that's good. Congratulations to Chipotle in Lansing. That's awesome. Hopefully more to come, you know. This, uh, this creates uh, a little bit of hope at a time when there's so much despair. And uh, for that, I'm eternally grateful. More labor news. In the last, all in the last week, 4,500 Columbus, Ohio teachers reached a deal after a three-day strike in Columbus, Ohio. You guys saw the state of disrepair in the Columbus, Ohio schools as we covered it yesterday. Chipotle workers won their first ever union. REI workers win their second union. Workers at the iconic Chateau Marmont restaurant won a union with Unite. Starbucks workers have unionized six new stores in five states. Fucking awesome. Red labor summer. The only time I unionize is at the top of the hour ad break when I serve you a top of the hour ad break and then I tell you you can fight back against those ads by subscribing. That's the only thing I'm good for and nothing else. Uh, Twitter anarchists are significantly more impactful because they post super hard and uh, put their sub stacks under uh, tweets that pop off. So obviously those people, I think, are doing a much better job of advocating for leftist values, popularizing it, and pushing for it uh, in, a way, in a way that you cannot even comprehend. The only thing I push for is the top of the hour. Ad break. I didn't realize how powerful Teamsters and flight attendants were. They claim they have the capacity to shut down the entire economy to create better conditions for transit workers. Yes, of course. Are you kidding me? I mean, yeah, one million percent. A new Gallup poll shows that labor unions have reached their highest approval rate since 1965. 71% of Americans approve of labor unions, up from 68% last year. The increase comes amid high-profile victories for labor unions at companies like Starbucks and Amazon in recent months. But even as approval for unions has increased... Bro, labor unions have a higher appro approval rating. It's like triple the approval rating of like congress dude that's insane and yet for some reason people just simply cannot unionize hmm yeah, what's going on there why do you think that's the case huh 
chip rates have dropped to historic low. The Bureau of Labor Statistics shows the union membership rate fell to 10.3 percent last year, about 14 million members. That's down half a percent from 2020. Professor Sharon Block is the executive director of the Labor and Work Life Program at Harvard Law School. She is with me now for more. Professor, welcome. Why do you think union membership has fallen despite the rise in approval, especially with companies that many Americans use daily or weekly? Yeah, it's a great question, and it's a very stark contrast that we're seeing. It's, we now have a fairly sustained um, trend line of increase in support among the public for unions, and at the same time, as you said, this declining rate of membership. To me, that says that there's something very wrong with the law that protects people's right to be in a union. Yeah. Uh, there's just no other explanation for why you would see this support, this um, uh, desire. Many of the that 71 percent also said that they would like to be in a union, but the law is becoming an obstacle to workers being able to make that desire into a reality. What does falling union membership, even as you rightly point out, despite public support for unions, what does the actual falling membership mean for the economy? Well, it means that a lot more people who are very vulnerable in this economy, and as we see, especially this coming out of the pandemic, there's a lot of sort of churn in the economy. And you know we have a tight labor market now, which sort of gives workers a little bit more leverage, a little bit more ability to go to a different employer. But we also see at the same time, the Fed trying to rein that strong labor market in and, and workers will be back to being very vulnerable to having to accept unacceptable uh, conditions in their employment. And I think that's why you're seeing this wave of organizing like at Amazon, at Starbucks, REI, Trader Joe's, lots of different places at this moment where workers feel like they have a little bit more leverage because um, the unemployment rate is so low. These workers are trying to translate that moment of leverage into something more lasting so that they can be sure as this uncertain time in the economy sort of uh, uh, settles, that it doesn't settle in a place that says, oh, workers, you have to get paid less. You have to accept less conditions so that we can um, get through whatever this period that the, that the Fed has said will be painful. Uh, Professor Sharon Block, we hope to continue the conversation another day. In the meantime, thank you for today. We appreciate it. Thanks, Deirdre.